Hello guys, this is teacher Victor. I'm going to take you through physics. This is my first class in physics class. Form 1, you're going to start in form 1. So the first topic you will be taught in form 1, once you start your physics class, is introduction to physics. But before you do that, you must know why to take physics as a subject so physics is a very important subject which will lead you to your engineering field and you take it with a lot of seriousness if you want to be if you want to be engineer or if you want to do courses with mathematical problems then physics will be good for you so the first thing you're going to do is introduction to physics. When you join Form 1, you will be introduced to physics. So let's start with Chapter 1, Introduction to Physics. Scientists are people trained in science and who practice the knowledge of science. We require people in industries to work as engineers, technicians, researchers, in hospitals as doctors, nurses, technologists. So scientific methods. So we have a laboratory. What is a laboratory? Laboratory is a building specifically designed for scientific work and may contain pieces of apparatus and materials for use. So this is something that you will be interacting most of your classes will be in a laboratory where you will be doing physical practical physical physics practical classes and you will be interacting with certain apparatus or materials then hypothesis what is hypothesis hypothesis is a scientific fact or statement that has not been proven or experimented low law what is a law or principle so physics has got many laws you will be dealing with them you will be interacting with them some you are going to interact with them in form one form two form three up to form four where you'll be told to state some laws or principles regarding some topics or some experimental exper experimental subtopics so a law or a principle is a scientific fact or statement that has been proven and experimented to be true for all conditions for all conditions then a theorem is a fact or statement that is true and proven but applicable under specific conditions so the very first question you will be asked in form one your first exam you will be told to define what physics is. So what is physics? Physics is a science whose objective is the study of components of matter and their mutual interactions and their mutual interactions. Somebody can also define physics in a very easy way, just the study of matter and its relation to energy. So physics is the study of matter and its relation to energy. That is what physics is. That is the very first question you will be asked in Form 1 when you will be dealing or when you will be taking your first exams dealing in physics. So branches of physics. What are the branches of physics? So the first one is mechanics. Mechanics. What is mechanics as a branch of physics? So it is the study of motion of bodies under the influence of of force so mechanics is the study of motion of bodies under the influence of force number two you have electricity what is electricity as a branch of physics and what does it deals with so electricity deals with the movement of charge from one point to another through a conductor so electricity deals with the movement of charge from one point to another through a conductor what is magnetism what is magnetism 
as a branch of physics so it is the study of magnets and magnetic fields and their extensive applications and their extensive extensive applications so that is what magnetism is you will see this in your form 2 physics where we will be dealing with a topic called magnetism i will be explaining that in the later lessons the next one is thermo therm thermodynamics 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 as a branch of physics is the study of transformation of heat from one form to another from one form to another. thermodynamics is the study of the transformation of heat from one form to another optics what is op optics as a branch of physics it is the study of light as it travels from one media to another optics is the study of light as it travels from one media to another then waves 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 it is the study of disturbances which travel through mediums or vacuum waves as a branch of physics is the study of disturbances which travels through medium or vacuum so the first six those are the branches the major branches of physics you will be dealing with in high school how does physics relates with other subject how does physics relates with other subject so since physics enable us to understand the basic components of matter and their mutual interaction it forms the base of natural science biology and chemistry borrow physics borrow from physics in explaining processes occurring in living things and organisms physics also provide techniques which are applied almost every area of pure and applied sciences e.g. we have meteorologists and astronomy so what are the careers in physics what are the careers opportunities in physics you can be an engineer in physics then in engineering we have different types of engineers so we have civil you can be electrical mechanical agricultural environmental chemical or computer engineer so another one is meteorologist you can be a meteorologist when you study physics surveys so you can be a surveyor you can be ge geologist you can be astronomist all sciences based careers ie doctor nurses technologists engineers pharmacists need physics as a true foundation the next one basic laboratory rules when you will be doing your practicals in laboratory what are the things that you're supposed to follow these are the rules you're supposed to follow number one proper dressing must be observed proper dressing must be observed no loose clothing air and closed shoes must be worn proper dressing must be observed no loose clothing air and closed shoes must be worn why why do you need to wear closed shoes some chemicals you will be dealing with practicals where you will be handling some chemicals so some chemicals might split or fall in your legs so if you don't have if you don't have if you don't have a closed shoes they you can get an accident in the laboratory number two identify the location of electricity switches firefighting equipment first aid kit gas and water supply system identify the locations of electric electricity switches firefighting equipment first aid kit gas and water supply system number three keep all windows open whenever working in the laboratory you must keep all the windows open when you are in the laboratory number four follow follow all instructions carefully and never attempt anything in doubt follow all instructions carefully and never attempt anything in doubt so in your laboratory you must follow everything your teacher is giving you or you must follow all the instru instructions given in in doing particular practical in order to avoid what to avoid doubt
No eating or drinking allowed in the laboratory. You must, you cannot eat in a laboratory or drink in a laboratory. Reason is, you can think that some some liquid are colorless. You might think that they are water. Yes, yeah, they are not. They are chemicals. So, no eating or drinking allowed in the laboratory. Number six. Ensure that all electrical switches, gas, and water taps are turned off when not in use. That is this one. Then the last one, there's another one, number seven. Keep floors and working areas dry. Any spillage might be swept off immediately. Then number eight, all apparatus must be cleaned and returned in the correct location of the storage after use. So once you're done with practical, all the apparatus you are given must be cleaned and returned in the correct location or returned to the teacher who was handling with you that particular practical you were doing number nine hands must be washed hands must be washed before leaving the laboratory hands must be washed before leaving the laboratory then any accident any accident must be reported to the teacher immediately any accident must be reported to the teacher immediately so that is all about introduction in physics that is all about introduction in physics chapter 2 we are going to talk about measurement this measurement as a topic is a very important topic you will be handling it up to the end of your four year course in secondary school so in order in order to measure we need to know or define the quantity to be measured and the units for measuring it so what are the units of measuring it so in 1971 a system known as Systeme Internationale nowadays called International System of Units and seven basic units were agreed upon as follows so other quantities can be obtained from these basic quantities are referred other quantities can be obtained from these basic quantities are referred to as derived quantities so we have seven basic quantities you have seven basic quantities these are basic seven basic quantities are so from the table you can see on the diagram on the table you can see we have basic quantity SI unit and symbols kindly mark this a bit it is a very important topic that is supposed not to miss if you are intending to do physics up to form 4 so the first one basic quantity we have length the SI unit is meter then the symbol is M symbol is M mass mass the SI unit is kilogram symbol is kg time we have time the SI unit is second symbol is s not sec some of you will confuse and write the symbol of the symbol of of time is sec it is s you can be given this table and you will be told to fill it electricity current is amperes the symbol is a thermo thermodynamic temperature the si unit is kelvin and symbol is k capital k then you have luminous intensity which is candela as the SI unit then cd as the symbol but cd c is capital the amount of substance now so this is now mole then symbol is mole kindly take a look at that table it is very important it is normally being set in form one in your examination for term one and it can be set even up to form four and people will mess up with the symbols and the SI unit. Kindly take note of that. So let's first start first. Let's deal with length. What is length? Length is a measure of distance between two points in space. Length is measure of distance between two points in space. So let's explain that. So what is length? We have said length. Length is a measure between two points length is a measure between two points 
so if you have this so you have point a and you have point b so length is simply a measure between these two points so you can get the length of these two points so that is what length is so it is a distance or a measure between so it is a measure of distance between two points in space this uh, unit of length we have talked about it is meter so this uh, unit of length is meter and symbol is n and you know that and you know and you know that one kilometer is equals to 1000 meters one hectometer is equals to 100 meters one decameter is equals to 10 meters then one millimeter is equals to 0 0.001 meters kindly take note of that length is measured using a meter rule. length is measured using a meter rule or tape measure you can use a meter rule or tape measure to measure length area what is area area is a derived quantity area is a derived quantity from length so area is a derived quantity from length then area is the measure of the extent of a surface area is the measure of extent of a surface it is derived it is a derived quantity of length area is a derived quantity of length so then its SI units are square meters so the SI unit of length is square meters in bracket m squared other units can be centimeter squared kilometer squared etc formulas are used to determine area of regular bodies while other irregular bodies an approximation of area is used volume what is volume volume is the amount of space occupied by matter volume is the amount of space occupied by matter its si unit is cubic meter other sub multiples are cubic centimeter cubic millimeters liters decaliter so ends one cubic meter is equal to one million cubic centimeters and one liter is equal to one thousand cubic centimeters volume can be measured using measuring cylinder ureta can by pet burette volumetric flask beaker mass what is mass mass is the quantity of matter contained in a substance mass is the quantity of matter contained in a substance matter is what is matter matter is anything that occupies space and as weight matter is anything that occupies space and as weight the si unit of mass is the kilogram so the si unit of mass is kilogram but remember we can we also have some other some other sub multiples that are used to measure mass so you have grams milligrams and tons you know one kilogram is equal to 1000 grams then which is equal to 1 million milligrams and 100 tons a beam balance is used to measure mass a beam balance is used to measure mass let's move to density density is a drive quantity which is gotten from mass and and volume so density is the mass per unit volume of a substance density is mass per unit volume of a substance it's symbol by rho this is the symbol of density and its si unit its si unit is kilogram per cubic meter so kilogram is mass then cubic meter is volume so what that does mean that density is equal to mass all over volume density is equal to mass all over volume example one a block of glass of mass 187.5 grams is 5.0 centimeters long 2.0 centimeters thick and 7.5 centimeters high calculate the density of the glass before you do this calculation you must ensure that the length or the distance between the two points are in the same unit so like in this particular case they are both in centimeters and grams and mass is in gram so and the question is very specific you are told to give 
your answer in kilogram per cubic meter per cubic meter so what are you going to do first you are going to calculate density you have said density is equal to mass all over volume so multiply first weight volume multiply 5 times 2 times 7.5 that is going to give us volume then we divide by 1 million then you have 187.5 grams for us to change it into kilograms we divide by a thousand if you do that rightly we are going to get 2500 cubic centimeters as the volume of that as the density of that particular block number two the density of concentrated sulfuric six acid is 1.8 grams per cubic meter calculate the volume of 3.1 kilogram remember you're supposed to first convert 1.8 grams per cubic meter into kilogram per cubic meter so the first thing you're going to do here because we need volume volume is equal to mass over density we are going to have 3100 we change this one here into kilograms so this 3.1 kilogram kg we change into grams we are going to have 3100 then we are going to have 1.8 cubic grams per cubic centimeters if we divide that we are going to have 17 22 cubic centimeters or if you change this one into cubic meter we are going to have 0 0.001722 cubic meter so that is right can have a look at the table have a look at the table then we still have some calculations here so the mass of an empty density bottle is 20 grams it uh, it ma its mass when filled with water is 40 grams and 50 grams when filled with liquid x calculate the density of liquid x if the density of water is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter so the first thing here is supposed to know is to get the mass of water get the mass of water you are going to have 40 minus 20 you are going to get 20 grams if you change into kilograms you are going to have 0 0.02 kilograms volume of water so volume of water is going to be so we are given density of water so we know that density is equal to mass all over volume so it means that volume is equal to mass all over density so if you divide that correctly you are going to have 0 0.00002 cubic meters that so the volume of the water that filled the bottle is the same as the volume of that bottle so the volume of the water that filled the bottle is the same as the volume of that bottle so mass of liquid x you are going to have 50 minus 20 you are going to get 30 grams but you have said the volume of water that fills the bottle is equal to the volume of that bottle so the volume of water that fills the bottle is equal to the volume of that bottle kindly remember that i am repeating that several times so that we know what we are going to do so you have a mass of 0 0.03 kilogram we divide by the volume of the water that fills the bottle which is 0 0.00002 we are going to have 1500 kilogram per cubic meter as the density of liquid x relative density relative density so what is relative density this is the density of a substance compared to the density of water this is the density of a substance compared to the density of a water it's symbol it is symbolized by d and as no units since it is a ratio so relative density is equals to density of a substance all over density of a water it is measured using a relative density bottle example one the relative density of some type of a hood is 0 0.8 find the density of a wood in kilogram per cubic meter so the density of a substance is d times density of water you know that the density of water is 1000 kilograms per cubic meter so we multiply 0 0.8 times 1000 we are going to get 800 kilogram per cubic meter densities of mixtures densities of mixture so how do you calculate a density of a mixture so density of a mixture is equals to mass of the mixture all over the total volume of the mixture mass of the mixture all over the total volume of the mixture so that is how we calculate density example one example one 
we are told 100 cubic centimeters of fresh water of density 1000 kg per cubic meter is mixed with 100 kg per cubic meter of a sea water of density 1030 kg per cubic meter. We are told to do what? Calculate the density of the mixture. We are told to calculate the density of the mixture. So the first thing you're supposed to do here is to calculate the mass of each liquid or each liquid so mass is equals to density times volume then mass of fresh water you're going to have 1000 times 0 0.0001 you're going to have 0 0.1 kilograms then we get the mass of a sea water mass of sea water is 1030 times the density is that you're going to have 0 0.103 kilograms then we get the mass of the mixture we add them mass of the mixture is going to be mass of the fresh water plus mass of sea water we are going to add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.103 is equals to 0 0.203 kilograms so that is the mass of the mixture then mass volume of the mixture is going to be 100 cubic centimeters that is the volume of fresh water plus volume of the sea water which is 100 kilo cubic centimeters you are going to have 200 cubic centimeters which is going to be 0 0.0002 cubic meter once you have that therefore we say the density of mixture is equals to total mass of the mixture all over the total volume of the mixture you are going to have 0 0.203 that is the total mass of the mixture divided by 0 0.002 you are going to have 10 15 kilogram per cubic meter that is it we are moving to time what is time what is time time is a measure of duration of an event time is a measure of a duration of an event so the SI unit of time is second sub multiples of the seconds are milliseconds microseconds minutes hour day week year so it is measured using clocks stopwatches risk watches digital watches accuracy and errors what is accuracy what is accuracy accuracy is the closeness of a measure to the correct value of the quantity being measured get it right you'll be told in exam to define what accuracy is accuracy is the closeness of a measurement to the correct value of the quantity being measured it is expressed as an error what is an error an error is therefore the deviation of measurement to the correct value being measured. An error is the deviation of a measurement to the correct value being measured. In Form 4, I am very sure when you will be asked to define what accuracy is, you want to be able to remember. You want to be able to remember. If you are told to define what an error is in Form 4, you want to be able to remember. Kindly take note of that that accuracy is the closeness of a measurement to the correct value of the quantity being measured it is expressed as an error what is an error an error is therefore the deviation of measurement to the correct value being measured the smaller the the smaller the error the accurate the measurement so the smaller the error the accurate the measurement We have calculated that. So let's move. Chapter 3. We are going to topic 3. Topic 3 forces. 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 What is a force? What is a force? Force is a push or pull. Force is a push or pull. Force is a push or pull. Force is their form. So force is their form that which changes the body. Sorry, I was taking some water. Force is a push or a pull force is therefore that which changes the body's state of motion or shape the unit of force is newton 
it is a vector quantity it is represented by the symbol as shown in the diagram types of forces what are the types of forces we have nine types of forces we're going to discuss first one is gravitational force what is gravitational force this is the force of attraction between two bodies of given masses Earth's gravitational force is the force which pulls a body towards its center this pull of gravity is called weight pull of gravity is called weight so if you don't define what weight is it is the pull of gravity force of friction what is force of friction as the name suggests if you know what friction is then you will know what force of friction is so this is a force which opposes the relative motion of two surfaces in contact with each other friction in fluids is known as viscosity so what is viscosity it is friction in fluids number three tension force this is the force this is the pull or compression of a string or a spring at both its end we'll be seeing how we are going to calculate that in the further further topics upthrust fold upthrust fold this is the upward force acting on an object immersed in a fluid cohesive and adhesive forces cohesive is the force of attraction of molecules of the same kind then adhesive is the force of attraction of molecules of different kinds magnetic force this is a force which causes attraction or repulsion in a magnet this is a force which causes attraction or repulsion in a magnet then we have electrostatic force this is the force of attraction or repulsion of static charges centripetal force this is a force which constrains a body to move in a circular orbit or path. Then we have surface tension. This is the force which causes the surface of a liquid to behave like a stretched skin or elastic material. This is force. This force is cohesive. Let's move on factors affecting surface tension what are some of the factors that affect surface tension in exam you'll be told state and explain factors affecting surface tension the first one is impurities how does it affect the surface tension so they reduce the surface tension of a liquid so impurities reduce the surface tension of a liquid i.e this is just addition of detergents so impurities they reduce the surface tension of a liquid then the next one is temperature rise in temperature reduces tension by weakening intermolecular forces by weakening intermolecular forces let's move to mass and weight what is mass and what is weight and what is their calculation the differences so mass is the amount mass is the amount of matter contained in a substance while weight is the pull of gravity on an object the SI unit of mass is kilogram while the weight is neutral mass is constant regardless of a place while weight changes with the place or the relationship between mass and weight is given by that weight is equals to mass times gravitational pull or push where G is a gravitational force differences between mass and weight what are some of the differences between mass and weight number one mass is the quantity of matter in a body weight is the pull of gravity on a body mass is measured in kilograms weight is measured in newtons mass is constant everywhere then weight changes from place to place why because different places have got different gravitational work force it is measured using a beam balance mass is measured using a beam balance then weight is measured using a spring balance mass as magnitude only mass as magnitude only 
then weight as both magnitude and direction. Another one we can talk about mass is a basic quantity, then weight is a derived quantity. Weight is a derived quantity. I like the way we are moving. Example, example, an astronaut weighs 900 newton on Earth. On moon, he weighs 150 newton. Calculate the moon's gravitational force. You have said that weight is equal to mass times gravitational pull. So mass M is equal to WG. W is equal to MG. So weight is equal to MG. Weight is equal to MG. So now in this particular case, we are given weight and we are given mass. So for us to get G, we are going to simply divide 150 divided by 90. You are going to get 1.67 Newton per kilogram. Measuring force. How do you measure force? You have said force is measured using a spring balance. What is a spring balance? A spring balance is an instrument that uses the extension of a spring to measure forces. This. This is what a spring balance is. Example 2. The length of a spring is 16 centimeters. Its length becomes 20 centimeters when supporting a weight of 5 newton. Calculate the length of the spring when supporting a weight of those measurements you are given. So the first thing you must get the difference in the length. So the difference is going to be 20 minus 16. You are going to get 4 centimeters. So that 4 centimeters is equivalent to 5 newton. So you ask yourself, 5 newton causes an extension of 4 centimeters, therefore 1 centimeters causes an extension of 0 0.8 centimeters. That is a spring constant. Uh -huh. So 2.5 newton is going to cost what? So 2.5 times 0 0.8, you are going to have 2 centimeters. Therefore, we are going to add 2 centimeters from 16. We are going to have 18 centimeters. That. Again, you multiply 6 times 0 0.8, you are going to have 4.8. You, you add 4.8 to 16, you are going to get 20.8 centimeters. And that's the length of the spring when supporting that particular weight. Then we have 200 newton, which is multiplied by 0 0.8, you're going to get 160. 160 plus 16, you're going to have 176.0 centimeters. That is going to be the length of the spring when supporting 200 newton. As you can see on the screen, it is very clear. Vector and scalar quantities. Vector and scalar. What is, what is, what is a vector? What is a scalar quantity? So a scalar quantity is a quantity which has a magnitude or size only. So scalar quantity is a quantity which has a magnitude magnitude is also called size only examples are distance mass and speed a vector quantity is a quantity which has both magnitude and direction examples examples of vector quantities are displacement weight and velocity those are the examples of vector quantity. We move to chapter 4. Chapter 4, we are going to talk about pressure. Pressure. What is pressure? What is pressure? Pressure is defined as the force acting normally, perpendicularly, orthogonally per unit area. The SI unit for pressure is Newton per square meter. One newton per square meter is known as Pascal. So it means we can also write, after calculation, we can also write the SI unit as Pascal, P. So pressure is equal to normal force divided by area or that. So another unit for measuring pressure is the bar. One bar is equal to 10 raised to the power 5 newton per square meter. That is right. Then 1 millibar is equal to 100 newton per square meter. Calculating pressure. Example 1. A rectangular brick of weight 
10 newton measures 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 10 centimeters calculate the values of the maximum and minimum pressure which the block exacts when resting on the horizontal table so the first thing here is supposed to do is supposed to get the area of contact the possible areas of contact of that particular brick so the first one so you are asked to calculate the maximum and minimum pressure so how are you going to calculate maximum pressure and minimum pressure so maximum pressure is equal to maximum pressure is equal to force all over the minimum area then minimum pressure is equal to force all over the maximum area so area of the smallest face we are going to have 0 0.3 times 10 which is 30 centimeters times 10 centimeters you are going to have 0 0.03 square meter area of the largest face is 50 centimeters times 30 centimeters you are going to have 0 0.15 meter squared maximum pressure is equal to force all over the minimum area which is going to be 0 0.03 you are going to have your answer at 0 3.3 times 10 raised to power 2 newton per square meter minimum pressure is equal to force all over maximum area so you have 10 newton divided by 0 0.15 you are going to get 67 newton per meter squared that is the answer of that as you can see on the screen A man of mass, a man of mass, 84 kilograms, stands upright on a floor. If the area of contact of his shoes and the floor is 420 centimeters squared, determine the average pressure he exacts on the floor, given that gravitational force is 10 newton per kilogram. So the first thing here is supposed to do is supposed to get force. What is force? Force you are going to multiply 10 times 800 and so force. So weight or force. So weight is equal to mg. M is 84. G is 10. You are going to have 840. Area of contact you are given to be 420 square centimeters. If you change into square meter, you are going to have 0 0.042 that so if you divide that you are going to have 20 newton per square meter which is also called pascal so you can have 20 pascals pressure in liquids pressure in liquids pressure in liquids so a diver is 10 meters below the surface of water in a dam if the density of water is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter determine the pressure due to water on the diver so pressure in liquid is equal to height times density times gravitational pull so height is 10 density is 1000 gravitational pull is 10 you are going to have 100,000 newton per square meter or pascals pa the density of a mercury is 1300 kilogram per cubic meter. Determine the liquid determine the liquid pressure at the point 76 centimeters below the water surface. So you have 76 centimeters. You have to change that one into meters. You divide by 100. You are going to have 0 0.76 times the density which is 3600 times gravitational pull which is 10. You are going to have 103,360 newton per meter squared or pascals. We have question 3. The height of the mercury column in a barometer is found to be 67.0 centimeters as a certain place. What will be the height of water barometer at the same place? Densities of mercury and water are given to be 1.36 times 10 to the power 4 and 1.0 times 10 to the power 3 kilograms per cubic meter respectively. You are told to calculate. So, you say, let the pressure due to water be H1. So, the pressure of water is equal to the pressure of that. So, we are going to have pressure of water is going to be height times density times gravitational pull. 
So you are going to have 6.7 times 10 raised to negative 1 times 1.36 times 10 raised to negative 4. You are going to have 911.2 centimeters, or you can change into meters. You are going to have 9.112 meters. YouTube barometer. It is a transparent tube bent into a U shape. When a liquid is poured into a U tube, it settles at the equal level since the pressure depends on the height and share the same bottom. Consider the following diagram. So this is what we are talking about. This is a very common question in physics Super 1. So we have the atmospheric pressure. Then you have this is now the U manometer. So as you can see on the diagram, you have atmospheric pressure acting on that U manometer. Then if a blow is done, it means the height on the other side is going to rise. Height on P2 is going to rise. So for the levels, for the levels to differ, the pressure P1 must be greater than P2. Hence P1 from the diagram. Hence P1. Hence P1 is equal to P2 pressure 2 plus atmospheric pressure which is going to be height height times the density times the gravitational pull of that so if p1 is the lung pressure p0 p0 is the atmospheric pressure then if the difference is h then lung pressure can be calculated as this so p1 is equal to p0 plus h p g so this is the atmospheric pressure this we add this we add this additional here number one example a man blows into one end of a youtube containing water until the level differs by 40 centimeters that is now going to be our h if the atmospheric pressure is 1.01 plus times 10 raised to power 5 newton per square meter and the density of water is 1000 kilogram per meter per cubic meter then the lung pressure is going to be atmospheric pressure plus liquid pressure so atmospheric pressure you are given to be 1.01 times 10 raised to power 5 newton per meter squared therefore we add the difference in height so you have 40 centimeters so 40 divided by 100 you are going to have 0 .0, 0 0.4 times 10 times 10 so times 10 then times so 10 is the gravitational pull 10 is the gravitational pull then times density which is 1000 you are going to have if you do that math correctly you are going to have 1.05 times 10 raised to power 5 newton per meter squared we have also said that 1 newton meter squared is equal to 1 pascal so you can also write 1.05 times 10 raised to power 5 pascals that is it measuring pressure how do you measure pressure simple mercury simple mercury barometer simple mercury barometer it is, construct, it is constructed using a thick cold glass tube of length 1 meter and is closed at one end. Mercury is added into the tube then inverted and dipped into a dish containing more mercury. The space above the mercury column is called torricillian, torricillian vacuum. The height h if it is at the sea level will be found to be 760 millimeters mercury kindly note that the height h if it is at the sea level it is 760 millimeters you will be seeing your calculation you'll be having 760 millimeters mercury so that is the pressure of that so the atmospheric pressure can be calculated as so pressure is equal to density times gravitation pull times height so density you are going to have 1.36 times 10 raised to power 4 gravitational pull is 9.81 then the height is 760 milliliters mercury change into meters you are going to have 0 0.76 meters then 
pressure is equal to 1.36 times 10 raised to the power 4 times 9.81 times 0 0.76 you know where all these are coming from I have explained then you have Pascal note this is a standard atmospheric pressure sometimes called one atmosphere one atm it is approximately one bar we are moving on well so this is what you're talking about take a look at the diagram we have mercury dish we have glass tube then you have torresilian vacuum we have footing barometer this is a more accurate mercury barometer it is the adjusting screw is adjusted first to touch the mercury level in the leather bag aneroid 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 barometer what is aneroid barometer increase in pressure Increase in pressure causes the box to contract. The movements are modified and the system of the levers is transmitted to the barometer by the fine chain. This causes the pointer to move. The scale is suitable, calibrated and to read pressure. Since pressure falls or rises as the altitude falls or rises, the pointer can be calibrated to read the altitude. Have a look at it. This is what we are talking about. We have bottom gauge. Have a look at this. It is also called gauge pressure. It is used in gas cylinders. Take a look at it. Let's move to application. Application of pressure in gases and liquids. So we will continue from there in the next class. Have a nice time. This is Teacher Victor.